After eleven adventurous years outside England, we fly one more time to the kingdom of the Thunder Dragon, our last destination before returning to the land of hoodies and teen pregnancies. With fifty five miles to go, we are blocked between two landslides and spend the night on a precarious mountainside with rocks continuing to fall around us. We have to arrive at the auspicious timing of our twelve year old daughter's wedding and only complete the journey late afternoon with hours to spare. Preparations for the altar get underway first thing in the morning, directed by the Brahmin, the holy man conducting the wedding. My daughter, the child bride, is prepared for her day, and my wife has helped with her makeup and into her sari. The intricate preparations near completion, and with my wife we join the Brahmin in prayer for the blessing of the wedding stage. With bated breath, the guests wait as I go to collect the bride. I remember how small she was on the day she was born as I carry my beautiful girl to meet the wedding party. The bell tree is very sacred in Hinduism used in worshipping Lord Shiva. The groom a bell fruit is symbolic and it is believed that she will remain married to the major deity, the supreme Hindu god. A widow traditionally can no longer wear colour, jewellery or makeup and many have offered themselves on the funeral pyre of their deceased husband. The wedding is conducted in full after which parents, grandparents and guests wash the feet of the bride and drink from the cleansing water. As long as the bell fruit remains, my daughter, as with my wife before, can live as a married lady. Until death do they truly part.